Hi guys, welcome back to my channel where the gnomes live. This is Sharon Oyella and today we're making a table and chairs for my vintage suitcase dollhouse. If you missed the videos on the dollhouse itself, those links will be in the pinned comment below. Okay, there's five videos that go over the, the uh, suitcase. Today we're starting the furniture. All right, for the supplies list, you're gonna need cardboard. I'm gonna be using three different glues, but you could use just two, a PVA white glue and E6000. A thicker twine, wooden thread spools. Now there's different wooden thread spools that you can find. There's fatter ones and more narrow ones. I'm choosing to use the ones with the more narrow center. And to cut those, we're gonna need a saw and something to sand the thread spools with. You could use an emery board or sanding paper. I also made notches in the back of my chairs using a Dremel with this attachment right here. I'm sure you could use some other tool like a saw or an X-Acto blade. I just found that Dremel worked a lot faster. All right, guys, before we get started, let's go over a couple of things. Okay, first of all, I don't use a dollhouse scale. I just eye everything up. And I use sometimes the characters that I'm building for, I'll use them uh, as size reference, or I just go by the size of the room that I'm building in. This table and chairs fits perfectly in my suitcase house, and that's all I'm going by. And the other thing to keep in mind is the height of your table compared to your chairs. Now, I don't like it when chairs don't slide all the way underneath and get tucked away when not in use. So when I originally cut my first thread spool down for my table, the pedestal table, it was a little bit too short, so I did have to add a spacer in there. So just keep that in mind. Um, I'll show you how I fix that later, but just keep in mind the height of everything as you're building yours. My chairs are two ends of a thread spool, so that's two different thread spools, and together uh, they're just under an inch tall, which works perfectly for my table, which is just under an inch and a half tall. And again, those uh, heights are all adjustable according to where you cut your thread spools. And of course, I could have used this smaller thread spool. It was almost the perfect height, and I wouldn't even have to have cut that one. But I just wanted to keep the same sort of theme at the bottom, like the pedestal bottom of these thread spools, and they have that flared out bottom. All right, guys, with that out of the way, let's start building. We're gonna start with the tabletop first, and for that, I'm using two pieces of cardboard, and I also edged the tabletop with some twine. If you don't have a thinner twine like I have here, you can always break down the thicker twine just by unraveling the layers. All right, so you can cut any shape tabletop that you want. I went for a more oval shape. And I'm just gonna take an emery board and file off the glossy painted side of this cardboard. And then I'm gonna spread glue evenly across the entire surface, okay? Important to get right to the edges. And then sandwich these together. I'm gonna to hold them together with masking tape so they don't slip apart as I dry them. And the measurements are three inches by four inches. And then you wanna set the tabletop underneath something heavy like books or a brick if you have one and let that set for about a half an hour, 45 minutes. All right, it should be ready now and I'm gonna take off the masking tape. Now around the edge, it's gonna be open edge cardboard and, you, and that's unpaintable. So you have to cover that. You can use a wood filler or you can do it with paper towel like I've shown in previous videos. For me, I'm gonna use twine, and I'm gonna go around once with this twine at the top edge, and then I'll go around the bottom edge with the twine. So I go all the way around, and then I cut it where it joins. I didn't show it in the video, but I cut it where it joins, and then I started the next piece of twine underneath that first one. And then a bead of tacky glue over top, and make sure to rub that in because there's gonna be fibers of the twine is gonna be sticking up, so I use the glue to keep the twine sealed in, of course, and also to get those fibers to stick down. Okay, and I'm gonna let that dry. Now for the pedestal part, my thread spool, I found it was a little bit too short. So this is the tip of my glue nozzle. It fit in there perfectly and it gave me just a little bit more height. So I did attach it with E6000, but it would have been easier for me if I would have used hot glue to hold those pieces together while I glued the top to the bottom because the E6000 takes a while for it to grab on. So my uh, pedestal was a little bit unstable until that glue kind of grabbed on it. It took a couple of hours, okay? So I did run a bead of tacky glue underneath the tabletop and then twine around that to hold everything together and then set it underneath a weight to keep it full contact while it was drying. Now that everything's dry, it's a super solid little table, especially around the edges where I added the twine. Uh, very, very strong. I don't have to ever worry about the edges of the cardboard getting dented or, or nicked in any way. All right, so now I'm gonna paint the top of the table, but keep in mind, I'm gonna use textured paint. I also changed my mind on the color, okay? So just keep those things in mind as you're watching me. And textured paint is just thickening up the acrylic craft paint that you're using. You can use uh, 
baby powder or baking soda. I'm using baking soda. A couple things to keep in mind with that. You can't use washable paint because it becomes like a gritty mess. And after it's dried, there could be a film of sodium left on top. You'd have to paint over that. It also is scratchable, so you have to seal it in or paint over it. Okay, <laughs> so keep all those things in mind. So I put in a couple of teaspoons into a couple of tablespoons of paint there. It dries fairly fast. So I'm going to let this first coat dry and we'll come right back. All right, it is dry and I'm going to show you how scratchable uh, textured paint is. So I just dragged my fingernail across and you can see it leaves scratches. So you have to paint over that with just plain paint without baking soda in it or seal it in at the end, okay? I'm gonna show you that at the end anyway. And I had a few strands of the twine sticking up there, so I was just cutting them off. Now I'm doing a second coat of textured paint. I didn't have to do a second coat of textured paint, I'm just trying to use it up. Uh, the one thing about textured paint, like I said, it dries fairly fast. If you leave it in a bowl, do cover it. Like I use Saran Wrap over this um, to keep it from drying out. And it won't keep very long, okay, sitting in a bowl. So I'm just gonna use it up here and then I'll let this coat dry. And here is the film of sodium that I was talking about at the beginning uh, that, that can be left on your paint and that's from the baking soda. Okay, It's not a big deal. It happens to me quite often. All you have to do is take the final coat color that you want to use. Don't put any more soda in it. Just plain paint and paint over top and that will seal it in and then you don't have to worry about the sodium showing through. Okay, And then Remember that I am changing my mind on the colors after I'm done, but I'm gonna follow this right through on video for you so you can see what I did right to the end. And once that was dry, I was going to do a uh, dry brushing of this a soft suede, any beige will work. This is what I do with, with something that I wanna make look like wood. So you just dip your brush in there and then you get the majority of the paint off and you go over the surface of your, of your piece very lightly just to highlight any raised area in your paint, just to make it look like wood grain. Okay, but in the end, I painted over this whole thing with a lighter color, as you know, um, but I'm just showing you what I've done. And then after that step, I did seal it in with this water-based sealer, and that just makes it easier for dusting later on, and it just gives it a nice shine for a tabletop. And the brown was nice, but then I decided to go with a lighter color, and I think that goes well with the chairs. Okay, so this is a soft suede, and I did do a dry brushing on top after the soft suede with a burnt umber to give a little bit of a grainy look. And the edges, I could have spent more time on them with the textured paint, uh, but I'm, I'm happy with how it turned out. And you can see it actually tried blue at one time with the table as well, but in the end, I think the soft suede goes nicely with the chairs. And I did do a final coat of the water-based sealer as well. We are gonna be making the chairs now. I just wanna give you a closer look and just explain them a little bit better. So I have two different thread spools, okay? A larger one and a smaller one. The larger one I used for the seat and the smaller one I'm using for the base of the stool. And you can do it however you wanna do it. I just thought that was a better, a better look for what I was going for. And the twine that I used around the back is super strong. Uh, I have no worries about it breaking. Uh, I think they're actually stronger than your regular miniature wooden chair. I think they're super adorable. And I believe that one of these spools belonged to my grandma. I could be wrong, but I had my own vintage thread spools. And then when she passed, I got her sewing basket. Everything kind of got mixed together, but I know that she had some in there. So I like to think that one of these belonged to her. Anyway, I was just choosing which end I wanted to use as the seat and I figured that side. So I'm going to saw it right at the base. And remember, you can do this any height that you want to make it. And then I'm going to have to take an emery board and then sand down the rough part. And you can see in the center there, one of them has a hole. Now they both had a hole, but I fixed that one chair. So this one, if you take something pointy and go underneath, you can most of the time save the graphic, but this one had a little piece missing. So I'm going to have to insert some napkin closest to the color of that uh, graphic there. I fill it up with tacky glue, make sure I get it completely soaked with the glue. And with my pointy tool, I'm going to push it in there very gently until I can get my finger to hold the top of the graphic so I don't push all the way through. And just get that napkin pushed up and around to where I can save the graphic and also fill in the hole. And it does work, 
just check on it after 20 minutes to so half an hour make sure that the napkin isn't being sucked down because as it's drying it, it kind of shrinks right so you want to check on that and maybe push it back up if it's doing that and then I sealed it in with a water-based sealer now I'm marking off my the back of the chair where I'm going to put the twine so I did play around with the height of the twine and I used masking tape to hold it in place so once I had that figured off I marked it off with my felt pen and then I used my Dremel and I made indents that go all the way down where I'm going to fill the twine inside those indents. And this is going to make a super solid back. All right, friends, popping in with an edit so you can see close-ups of what I'm doing and also to give a couple of tips about cutting. So when I cut mine, I made sure that the paper labels were facing the right way. And also when I was cutting, I didn't cut past the edge of the paper label. So right to this edge right here is where I stopped with the Dremel. And then I'm going to dry fit everything before I attach anything, of course. So again, I'm going to put that in the holes that I made and then attach it with masking tape, check out the height. And I'm happy with that. So before I can carry on, I'm going to cut another piece of twine the exact same length. So I'll have the same length twine for the next chair that I make. And the indents that I made needed to go a little bit deeper. So that's what I'm doing here. Just going over those indents, making a little bit more room for that twine. And now that twine has a little bit more room. To attach these, I'm actually going to use E6000. I, I do believe tacky glue would have done a great job, but I've been using E6000 a lot lately. It's just a super solid glue once it's cured. So it takes 24 hours to cure. You can touch it after a couple of hours. Um, you can pick up the chairs and stuff after a couple hours. But before then, I would leave masking tape on it to make sure that it stays put while it's curing. And that was a good size bead of E6000 and then you want to make sure that you're shoving the twine as far as it will go into that indent and then a tight fit with the masking tape. Pull that masking tape really tight so that twine has full contact with the glue and the thread spool as the glue is curing. All right so it's been a few hours it's not totally cure yet but I can take the masking tape off and I can see that it's stuck in there so what I'm going to do I'm going to take tacky glue and go all the way around the twine and just completely saturate that twine with the tacky glue. This is going to stiffen up the twine. I'll also take the opportunity to get the fibers of the twine to stick down. As it's drying, just make sure the twine is sitting exactly how you want it to sit because once it's uh, cured, that tacky glue is going to hold the twine in that position. And the tacky glue isn't totally cured yet, but it's dry enough to play around with now. So I have some cut free gloves on and I'm going to take an X-Acto blade and just going to make the back of the twine flush with the thread spool. And with that done, I'm ready to attach the two spindles in the back. And I found the twine was way too thick, so I'm just going to unravel them down to two of the layers. And I'm going to cut these way too long. I'm going to mark off where I want them. And then again with my Dremel, I'm going to make indents here, but not as long or as deep as the other two. And again, using E6000, a generous bead in there. And you can see I'm stretching it out as I'm putting it in and holding it down with my thumb. And like I said, these are way too long. And again, with the masking tape, just make sure it's pulled tight and then let that sit for a couple of hours. All right, a couple hours have gone by and I'm just going to check these out to see if they're firmly in place and they are. And the tops here, I did cut them down a little bit shorter and I frayed the ends. I had already done the other chair, so I know exactly what I wanna do here. So I want to wrap the top over the back of the chair, but I don't want to have any bulk up there. So I don't want to look like I've wrapped twine around. I just want to fray the ends out as best I can, and then I'll spread those over the back of the chair with tacky glue. And then get the tacky glue on there, and that's a generous amount. Get it spread evenly all over the twine. I want it saturated with the glue. And then saturate those strands up there, and just lay them over and press them into the dry twine. And of course, a little bit of extra glue never hurts anything, so I just put a little bit on top. And again, making sure the tops are down. Everything's pressed in firmly. And then once that's dry, all there's left to do for the chairs is just attach it to the bottom. So again, I'm using E6000. Tacky glue would have done a great job, but because I have the E6000, I'm gonna use it. Just making sure that everything is level. So you're gonna to have to make sure that you sand it down with your emery board or sanding paper and make sure you have even contact between both pieces. And then I'm gonna set a little weight on top and I'll leave it for a couple of hours. All right, my friends, that brings us to the end of this video. In the next video, I believe I'm gonna be making the twig 
bed that I made in 2012. I'm going to remake this one for you guys on video and it's using a vintage sewing needle card. So I thought that would be fitting since I did the chairs and table with the thread spools. So if you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure you are so you don't miss the next video in this series. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.